An Oakland County man charged with sexually assaulting a child he met on an app that's popular with teenagers. Pontiac man who is HIV positive is accused of having sex with a 12-year-old girl he met on Snapchat. And now police fear there could be more victims. Jason Colthorpe is live in Allen Park with the disturbing allegations. Jason. Disturbing is such an understatement here, Kimberly, but uh, police say this girl and this man were seeing each other for several weeks before they were caught. She at first thought he was a teenager just a few years older than her, but soon came to suspect he was closer to 40 years old. And uh, take a listen. It began as a 12-year-old girl chatting on Snapchat with a man she thought was 19. Police say the conversations intensified, and he tracked her to her home by using Snapchat's location services, and they began having sex. It all started to come to light August 19th when her parents reported her missing. She was found six hours later by Dearborn police who say she admitted to being 12 and on her way to see her older boyfriend. An Allen Park investigation soon identified a suspect. He wasn't 19. He was 35-year-old Anthony Hodges of Pontiac. But one thing always holds true is don't talk to strangers. Detective Jim Thorburn says Hodges used his influence to convince the girl to run away with him on the day they were discovered. It's another warning for parents to monitor social media. The kids are so well-versed in these platforms, and we aren't as parents. You need to get an idea of who they're talking to, where they're going. Hodges, who is HIV positive, is charged with four counts of first degree criminal sexual conduct along with another count involving someone under 13. It discussed you as a cop, it discussed you as a parent, it discussed you as a human. I mean, there's really no level it doesn't, and um, especially as you know, me being a father myself and being a police officer at the same time, I mean, we really got to be vigilant on the things we watch. I mean, social media platforms are great, they can be used for good, and they can also be used for evil. This is an instance where it took a turn for the evil. Yeah, and hard to believe, but that report is sugar-coated. There are a lot of details we can't yet report about this case, but relating to Hodges having HIV, he's also charged with two counts of trying to knowingly give it to someone, infect someone who didn't know that he had it, and for being an habitual offender of that offense because he was previously convicted of it. Uh, at at this point, police do not believe the girl is infected, and they also don't think this is an isolated incident with Hodges. They think there could be a chance other victims will be coming forward. Or in Allen Park, Jason Colville, Local 4. Before I get into the commentary, shout out to Black Justice for sending me the video or the audio that was attached to this. Before I really go in on him, I have to say something about the girl. This is why, again, I keep telling parents they have to monitor the social media that their child is on, no matter if it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, or any other platform. This girl was 12 years old, and she was communicating with a guy she thought was a teenager. When they said a couple years older, I'm thinking maybe like 15 or something like that. She said that she was communicating with a guy she assumed to be 19, which means technically that person would have been an adult anyway. Why was she talking to someone she assumed to be 19 and she's 12? That could still be seen as statutory rape because the age of consent would have to be eight, um, 17. After 18, they're already an adult. So, uh... Well, 17, see, I don't know what it is in Michigan, but I'm going to just say 17. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. That's, you know, the first part, because I keep seeing, you know, there's so many stories that come out with these kids talking to these older people, thinking that they're one way and they turn out to be another. That's my gripe with that. Now let's get on to this guy right here. This guy is a 35-year-old piece of shit. I can't even bring to myself to call this guy a man. Or even a human being. This guy knows he was communicating with a child. Still continued to engage with communication with this child. Met up with this child. And the child ran away with him. He knowingly had HIV. He proceeded to have sex with this child. Now they said they don't know if the child had contracted HIV. Hopefully they didn't. He knowingly has HIV 
and has a history of exposing other people to it. If he was in California, he probably would have been able to get away with it. But slowly, what they're doing in, in not Chicago, in California, they want to do everywhere. Let that shit stay in California. They need to make it go away, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not out there. I can't affect their policy. And he, you know, like I said, he has a history of doing this, has been convicted of doing it, and then sent back out into the world. I said, these kinds of people do not need to be on the street amongst regular society. Because the fact that this guy continues to do this means he has a lust for doing it. He figures, well, somebody gave it to me, so I'm going to punish everyone who I can because of what someone else did to me. And that's the scary part about people who have HIV and AIDS. Many of them have some very cruel intentions when they have it. They'll use a disease that they have to live with for the rest of their life that they know how they can pass it. And they will uh, knowingly give it to other people to inflict pain upon them. Like that's one of the worst things that anybody can do to somebody else. Because that's a huge violation of trust, mainly because you didn't tell the person that you had it. And the reporter said that this right here, what this case right here, is just a sugarcoat of what more went on. So who knows what else this guy has done that they're not saying. What they've already said is just scratching the surface, which means this person is just foul as all hell, as you can be. But people like him deserve the worst to happen. I mean the absolute worst to happen. I've covered many stories on my channel where you've had people who had these... uh had these STDs and STIs and they go out there and they have wild sex with people no matter the age just because they want to because they want to spread or expose this to people those are some of the worst people in the world like I said if he was in California he would have probably been able to get away with this as a misdemeanor and not as a felony yeah California is on some other shit on some out other worldly nonsense but this guy, I'm sorry, this thing, and he actually looks like a thing. He doesn't even look human. This thing that you see in the picture, hopefully wherever he ends up, they have heard of his story and they deal with him the same way. Because I'm, I'm going to be surprised if some people in prison where he is probably has the same thing he got. 